hi everyone welcome again in this video we are going to learn how to use console as a service registry solution as a learning exercise you can watch my previous videos in which we implemented the service registry solution using spring cloud netflix and zookeeper and in this video we will be focusing on console so console is a product from hashicorp and it is used to implement many different use cases We can use console to implement a service discovery. We can also use console to establish a service mesh. Console can be used to implement the dynamic load balancing, encryption, monitoring, traffic management, and so on. And on top of that, we have a project under Spring Cloud, which is Spring Cloud Console. It simplifies everything related to console via Spring Boot auto configuration, which we will see soon. In order to work with console, we first need to run console on the local system so that we can establish a connection with the running instance of console. To do that, I'm going to use Docker desktop. So we will run console on a local machine as a Docker container. If you're not aware or comfortable with Docker desktop, then please watch this video where we explain how to install the Docker desktop. So I'll open my Docker desktop and here we can search for the images of console. So if I search console, here we see this is the official image docker official image for console and i will simply run the image and then we need to provide some settings like container name so let's name it console thing and then we simply need to bind the port so we will use the same ports Six zero zero, and that's it. Hit run. This will download the Docker image if it doesn't exist on your system, and then it will run a container based on that Docker image. So we can see that the console is now up and it is running as a Docker container on the local machine. The next thing is to set up a microservice, a Spring Boot API that will act as a console client. All right. To do that, let's go back to the Spring Initializer and create a new Spring Boot project. I'm going to create a Maven project. We'll change the group. Artifact. Let's name it console client. We'll change the package name and add the dependencies. It's going to be a REST API, so we need to add the web dependency. And for the console, we need to add the discovery one because right now we are focusing on the service discovery not on the distributed configuration so we will simply select console discovery then generate the project the project has now been downloaded and i'll open it with intellij this will now set up the spring boot project on a system so the setup is complete now let's quickly verify the pom.xml and we have all the required dependencies boot starter web and starter console discovery all right next i'm going to rename my application.properties file to application.yml it doesn't make a difference but i'm just going to use yaml for this one so in order to test the api we need a simple controller so let's add one will add a simple controller in this we'll add a simple controller following the pattern from the last videos add the annotation rest controller and a simple method that will return a hard coded string like this and add the annotation get mapping to support http get calls so we have the API set up a very simple API. Now the next thing is how do we tell this project or this API so that it can establish a connection with the console. Now if we go back to the documentation in the section registering with console here we can see that by default a Spring Boot project looks for the console which is running on this local host and port 8500. And if and only if your console is located somewhere else, maybe the host is different or the port is different, then we need to pass this configuration in the application.yml. If not, then we don't need to pass anything explicitly. Spring Boot application can find and locate the console and it can connect to that instance. And in this case, because we have not changed anything, the console in the Docker container is running with the default configuration, which is localhost and 8500 port. 
then we don't need to provide the additional configuration in application.yml file. When we run our API, it will be able to locate this console. Because we intend to run multiple instances of the same API to mimic the scaling up scenario, we need to add some configurations in application.yml file which is server.port will set the port to 0 so that when we run a new instance, Spring Boot will auto assign a random port to that running instance instead of hard coding it. Alright. The second thing that we need to add is we need to provide a unique instance ID so that each instance would have its own instance ID and so that we can see different instances in the console when we query the console. To do that, let's go back to the documentation and find the section where we need to add the instance ID like this. So we need to pass spring.cloud.console.discovery. So let's do that. Spring.cloud.console and discovery and in that we need to add the instance id and for the instance id let me reuse the same expression that we used in the old video here it is so for the instance id we are using values of spring.application name then whatever value we can find in the framework or in the runtime and appending a random value to make this instance id unique and we also need to provide the name spring.application.name and we can name it console client Okay, so we have set up everything. We have configured the random port, the name of this application and a unique instance ID. And we have the console up and running on the local machine. So let's start the API now and see if it can register with the console. Let's run the main class. So the application is up now and Spring Boot has assigned a random port to this instance and we can see it was registered with the console. And if we go to console, we see some activity, although it's difficult to pinpoint where exactly it's happening. Right now, let's try to run this API. And to do that, we can call localhost and then pass the port that has been assigned to this one. Let me copy this one. Here it is. And we see hi. It means the request is being redirected to the API and it was able to execute the controller and return the response. All right. Now let's try to run another instance of the same API to test that both the instances will be able to register themselves. To do that, I'll simply run the same class again. And it's saying stop and rerun. That means we need to clone the config. And for that, let me save the current application name for now. And then we'll go to the current file and run it. This will start a new instance of the same API. So the second instance is also up and we can see the random auto assigned port and it also registered itself with the console successfully. So let's verify this instance as well. If we change the port and hit enter, we see the response on the browser, which is high. So both the instances are up and running and they are servicing the requests. Now the next thing that we need to see is how to query console discovery to find the information related to the instances or different services which have been registered with the console discovery. To do that, let's stop the instances first and following the old pattern, we'll go to the controller and we'll use the discovery client. This one which is coming from the org.spring framework. So the discovery client is an abstraction provided by the Spring framework. It's auto configured by the Spring Boot depending on the dependencies that we add to the project. So for example, in this project, because we are working with console discovery, we added the console discovery dependency. So it will configure this discovery client for the console. In the previous video, when we did the same thing, but with Zookeeper, in that case, discovery client was configured for the Zookeeper. So that's the benefit of abstraction. Here, because it is already configured, we simply need to auto wire it in order to use it. And once auto wired, once we have the reference, we can use the discovery client. We can call the methods to find the information of all the services. So we can call, let's say, get services to check how many services are registered with the console right now. It returns a list and we can simply get all the services printed here. Okay, once done, when we start the service and if we call the controller, 
we should see all the services currently registered with this console instance. So let's start both the instances one by one to test this code. This is the instance one. Let me start this one. And this is the second instance. So this instance is up. This time we see a different port because that's the auto assignment of random ports. And the second instance is also up. We can use any of these. Let's pick this one to test the API and call the controller. Let me clear the console. We'll go to the browser. We'll replace the port and hit enter. We see high, which is same as before. But this time, if we check the console, we see two services, console and console client. Console client is the one that we developed, if you remember the name console client. But we don't see the different instances because we are running two instances. For that, we can use another method of the console discovery, which is discovery client dot get instances by service ID. So we'll provide this service ID and it also returns a list which has service instances and and then we can use this service instance to find the relevant data points like service id let's print it and uh, port okay so let's stop and rerun both the instances instance 1 and instance 2 and instances are up now. Let's test the API again. Go to the console. And we see four instances of the console client, although we are running only two. So apparently console did not deregister the previous instances that we were running. So let's stop the instances and start the container, then retry again. So I'll just stop the container. And uh, yeah, let me restart the container again. So the console is up and let's restart the instances. So instances are up again and we can retest the API. So let's replace the port, hit enter and let's see. And we still see four instances. What's wrong here? Let me remove the container and start the container from scratch just to be safe. So I'll stop and remove the container. And then I'll start a new container from the console image. Okay. Console version 1 and 8.0.0.8.0.1. Let's run. This is up now. Let's start the instances as well. Okay, so both the instances are up. Let's retry. Let me clear the console. Hit enter. Go to the console. And this time we only see two instances. 56861 and 56871. All right. So these are the two instances which are up and running right now. So in this video, we learned how to set up a service registry solution using console. We learned how to develop the API and make them a console client. And we also learned how to use discovery client with console. So that's all for now. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.